What's up guys, it's Coding Jesus, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at what a quant is, what it takes to be a quant, and how much money quants make. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel, I'm Coding Jesus, I'm a quantitative developer, not a quant, I'm a quantitative developer, we'll get to that in a sec, but I write algorithms to interface with the exchange in an automated fashion, and I also write trading applications for traders at the firm that I work at to display risk, to allow them to trade, et cetera, et cetera. All right, guys, so let's jump right into it. What is a quant? What do they do? What skills do you need to become a quant? And how much money do they make? All right, guys, a quant is another way to describe a quantitative analyst. It's the short form for quantitative analyst. In a very general sense, quants work with numbers to backtest various strategies that will make money for the firm. Now, quants aren't only theoretical in nature, they don't only work with crunching numbers and data, but they also trade themselves. So they practice what they preach, really. They build the models that, will that a quantitative developer like myself will implement, and then they go ahead and trade based off those models as well. All right, guys, now that we understand kind of the general gist of a quant, how is that different from a quantitative developer like myself? Well, as a quantitative developer, I'm more of a software engineer than a data cruncher, model creator, backtester, analyst type, right? So what I do is I work with the quant team to implement the models and algorithms that they come up with, which have shown via historical data to generate profitable returns for the firm. So they think of the strategy, they backtest the strategy, they test the strategy, they analyze the strategy, and I go ahead and implement the strategy. Now, that doesn't mean that I need to know all the fancy mathematical concepts that they use when actually building out their models, but that does mean that they need to be able to explain it to me and I need to be able to understand those mathematical concepts to actually implement it in whatever language I'm using to implement that algorithm. Okay, guys, now that we understand the difference between quantitative analyst and quantitative software engineer like myself, Let's talk about what skills are required to be a quant or quantitative analyst. There are technical skills and there are soft skills. So I'm going to be speaking about the technical skills first. There's a couple of technical skills, guys, but I guess the first thing that would come to mind when you hear the word quant, quantitative, the first thing that comes to mind is numbers. You need to be very comfortable with mathematical concepts, with crunching numbers, because your job will require analyzing a tremendous amount of data and building both statistical models and forecasting models for whatever your firm is working on, right? So you are responsible for creating those strategies. That might be some sort of back-tested strategy that recognizes patterns and anomalies, and you might need some sort of mathematical understanding of kurtosis, skew, value at risk, etc., to be able to implement and test those models. But it might also involve models that forecast the future or attempt to forecast the future. That might be something like a volatility model to price options. All right, guys, now that we understand the numbers component, let's talk about the education component. Oftentimes, quants come from an educational background that focuses on numbers, math, and finance. That might be a master's in mathematics, a master's in financial engineering, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you don't come from that mathematical background, that's still okay. If you have a background or work experience in data analytics, that might also help you in the quantitative field if you're looking to break into the quantitative field but it really helps you if you have some sort of background in math and finance, right? Finance isn't a must, but if you do have a background, and especially if you have an interest in that, then that goes a long way when you're applying to become a quantitative analyst. Okay, the third technical skill you should have as a quantitative analyst or applying to become one is an understanding of various trading concepts. Now that often involves option theory. So understanding the various option pricing models, Black-Scholes, Bachelier, etc., understanding the advantages and disadvantages of those option pricing models goes a long way. All right, the fourth and probably one of the most critical skills you should have as a quantitative analyst is programming language experience. Now, you're not going to be required to be a developer per se, but you will be required to backtest, test, analyze, and crunch a lot of data using at least one programming language. That might be R, that might be MATLAB, but oftentimes it's Python. Yes, there are C++ quants. They are very rare and far in between, but most use Python for its simplicity, the ability to chart data easily, the ability to take in and process data and read data easily, and just the ability to really iterate over your work easily. 
The last technical skill that I think is very important to be a quant is computer usage. You should be comfortable with Excel. You should be very comfortable with the Bloomberg terminal, right? So you should be comfortable interfacing with computers. Now, I know I talked a lot about backtesting, programming, analytics, etc., but quants aren't only theoretical. They don't only make models hoping they'll work. They actually trade based off their models. So maybe half to three-fourths, maybe two-thirds of their time, they're focusing on building out models, but one-third to maybe, you know, half of their time, they're actually spending trading. So they will trade based off their models. They will trade various portfolios of instruments. Maybe they might trade a given you know, product group like natural gas, or maybe they might trade a given another product group like treasuries. But quants will go ahead and actually trade based off the models that they've built. So they're not only theoretical, they're not only hiding somewhere in a back room and drawing on a whiteboard, but they're also implementing the models themselves via the practice of trading. All right, guys, now let's talk about the soft skills required to be a quantitative analyst. The first soft skill is a trader's mentality or a trader's temperament. Oftentimes, like I said, you're not only building out models, implementing those models, passing them on to quantitative developers, but you are also trading yourself. So you will be required to be able to work well under pressure and have the temperament of a trader to understand when to cut losses, to understand when your strategy isn't working and when you need to iterate on that strategy. All right, so the temperament is very important and oftentimes employers will give you maybe an IQ test or even a psychometric test to see how you handle pressure. And in an interview, they might ask you extremely difficult questions, not necessarily to see how you answer those questions, but to see how you vocalize yourself, how you think through problems and how you handle the pressure that they are forcing on top of you. All right, guys, the second soft skill is risk taking abilities. Guys, the markets are dynamic, they're constantly changing, so you're required to think on your feet and be willing to take some risks, even if it means generating small losses, as long as you're able to get something out of those losses, improve your models, understand where you went wrong, and then pivot. That brings me to my third soft skill, which is the innovative mindset. Oftentimes, at a firm that you're working at, especially at the firm that you know I'm working at as a quantitative software engineer, you're going to see that there is a lot of various models. You might have, you know, model A to model 20, model 100. And this might be a model for the exact same concept. It might be a volatility model. It might be some other model that, you know, quants are developing. But when you join these hedge funds and these high frequency trading firms, you'll notice, you know, we're on model 154. Why were you on model 154 and how is it different than model 153? Well, model 154 is a slight improvement on model 153. So quants are required to not be anchored to what they've created, but rather learn from any mistakes that their model generates, be proud of the profits that it does create for the firm, but also innovate based off the mistakes that you've learned from the previous model when creating a new model. All right, guys. And the very last thing that a quantitative analysts should be comfortable with is failure. You should be comfortable admitting failure, understanding where something didn't go well. And this comes back to that innovative mindset, which involves iterating on your failure to hopefully improve, improve, improve to the point where you're succeeding on a constant basis. So be comfortable with failure because markets are always dynamic. A trend that existed in the past three months during some given high volatility period might not exist in the next three months if volatility completely drops off. So you need to be cognizant of that, be comfortable with failure, and understand that sometimes failure is expected. Because if you don't fail, well, you didn't learn anything and you're not iterating off what you've previously created. Of course, you want to have certain risk mitigation tactics and, and management skills in place. You don't want to lose everything and say, you know, I'm just going to iterate on it and I'll, maybe I'll do better next time. But you do want to be able to be comfortable with those small losses, that small failure, so you can iterate later. All right, guys, in terms of what quantitative analysts make, they're probably making between 125 and upwards of $500,000 a year. And of course, your bonus is dependent on how well your models have contributed to the bottom line of the firm, whether that's your volatility models, maybe your back-tested back trading strategies, whatever your firm is actually going ahead to implement. Now, in terms of the quant's role in the process of what gets done, I told you how I interface with the quant, but this is, the or this is the flow in which a quant interfaces with the exchange, or so not with the exchange, with the firm that he works at. What a quant will do is he will generate the strategies, generate the trading ideas, generate the models, 
for me like a quantitative developer to go ahead and implement. I will implement those tested strategies and those tested strategies might be completely algorithmic. So they might interface with the exchange entirely with no intervention, or they might be used by traders at the firm. Now those traders can be market making, market making oriented traders, uh, directional traders. They might be quantitative analysts themselves, but they will then be passed on to the traders at the firm to go ahead and leverage when they're making trades on a day-to-day -day basis, of course, alongside various risk management tools, et cetera, et cetera. All right, guys, if you liked the video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more. I look forward to making another video about what a quantitative developer does, what's required of them on a day-to-day -day basis, how to become a quantitative developer like myself, and then another video on how to become a trader, not a quantitative analyst, which does some trading, but to become a trader, which focuses 90% of your time on actually trading based off models created and your own given trading knowledge and experience. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Discord link in the description box below. I have a Calendly link in the description box below if you want to speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. And I also have a Patreon link. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description box below, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.